I would like you to meet my buddy, who I nicknamed Muddy, and have a look at how he burrows. Mud lobsters are extremely important for the mangrove ecosystems along the muddy coasts of Southeast Asia, and they're important because of the extent to which they mix the mud up and add a third dimension to the habitat whose mud surface would otherwise be rather flat. The mounds made by the diggings of mud lobsters in some cases may be nearly three meters high, so the volume of mud they move is truly enormous. Because mud lobsters are such proficient diggers, they are often considered pests because they burrow through the dikes that are associated with impoundments used for raising prawns. Shortly after capturing this individual in the mangroves of Singapore, I brought him back to the laboratory where this footage was shot. Although these are very important species and figure prominently in mangrove ecology, because they're beneath the mud and strongly nocturnal, they're very rarely observed. So I shot this video simply because I was curious how they burrowed, and especially if they happened to be out on the surface how might they begin to burrow? In their natural habitat, these loads of mud are what create these huge mounds left behind by the mud lobsters. And I was especially interested in these mounds as three of the species of snakes that I was studying in Singapore frequently hid within the confines of these mounds. And two of these snakes eat species of crabs, a third species eats yet another variety of crustacean, a snapping shrimp. In addition to snakes, a variety of crabs are found in mud lobster mounds, as well as a variety of other organisms, and the species composition of all of these critters changes significantly from the base of the mound to the top of the mound along a gradient of moisture from very wet to quite dry and hard at the top of the mound. The mud in the tank of this captive specimen was taken from the same mud flats where the mud lobster was caught, and these tend to be very heavy clays, and as they dry, they're extremely sticky, very heavy, very difficult to deal with. And yet you can see as the mud lobster digs how handily it's able to actually unload the mud without it sticking to its claws. One of the things that made it difficult to capture this individual was unlike how its claws seemed to interact with the mud, the shovel I used got completely clogged with mud, was extremely heavy, and involved a very laborious process of scraping off in between successive loads. Notice how the unique shape of the claws of mud lobsters aids in their digging. In addition, the little depressions on the inner surface of the claws allows them to fit very neatly against the surface of the mud lobster and enables them to crawl through the very narrow diameter tunnels that they create. 